So welcome back to Vortex Garage, and we're catching back up on our Triumph Spitfire project here. Now, when you last saw, we were getting ready to start fitting our floor finally, and well, that's what we're going to do on the video today. We're going to work on showing you some of the difficulties of fitting such a large panel. Now, when we originally talked about doing this project, we kind of mentioned that we were going to be doing some things that were kind of a little bit new, things that we don't do very often here around the shop. And well, fitting a very large floor, floor pan is definitely going to be one of those. This isn't just a small repair piece. This isn't just a little component. This is a majorly large piece a structural component. In fact, it's not quite as tall as me, but this is probably about, I'd say, a four and a half foot long section of uh, body panel that needs to go in. And it's got a lot of different areas and places that it mounts, and it's also got some complexities about how it's going to weld in. You've got normal spot weld areas on flanges, and then you've got areas where you're going to have a butt weld, and you have to be a little more exacting on your cuts. So all in all, this is going to be a slightly challenging piece to do, but what we're going to do is kind of walk you through some of our steps that we're doing to figure it out and show you some of the trials and tribulations that we go through to get this fit in. And as I find oddities, I'll mention them on camera, and... Who knows, maybe that'll help someone who's in a similar boat later on. So first things first, we're going to kind of get this panel mocked up here. Um, you know, everything's looking pretty good. You know, I'm not at a stage where I'm ready to prep for welding or anything like that. This panel, I'm sure, is going to come on and off of the body many times. So this is just the first of several mock-up fits. So don't worry about, you know, final cleanup and preparation for weld just yet. So what I'm going to do for this, let me grab them. Got a whole bunch of locking pliers, and uh, we'll be using those to kind of lock down our piece. Um, you know, we're not going to do anything like Clicos or, or screws just yet. We're going to, this is how, how mock this fit up is. We're just using some locking pliers to hold it in place. All right, that'll hold it for now, it looks like. Let me get a couple more of them in. All right, so this will hold it for now, but we've really now got to take a close look and see where we're having fitment issues. And, um, oh, if you haven't noticed, I've already done a fair bit of trimming and cutting to get to this stage. This is probably about the eighth time that I've mounted this piece up. Um, I had to do a lot of cutting on the floor, but it makes sense to just show you what we had to do so far and show you some of what we're facing to go forward. So I'll grab the uh, mobile mount for the camera and we'll uh, come in here and just try to show and walk through that real quick. And then I'm going to just try to leave the cameras running. We'll proceed as we go, show you a little bit of that and then catch you up whenever I run into an issue. What started off innocently enough as an idea to spend 30 seconds showing some fitment areas on the floor, well, it somehow turned into about 10 minutes of detailed minutia on how the floor fits. And to avoid a long and, well, quite honestly, super boring video, we're going to go ahead and cut that out. But we will upload it separately for those of you who may find it useful. I mean, after all, tons of detail is a staple of Vortex Garage videos. Now, as a summary of fitment, on a large piece like this, it's a foundation to many things that attach to it, so getting it right is really important. So we used fixed points as a reference, things like the back flange, and then the mount on the front firewall, and then followed up by the flange towards the rocker panel. The main fitment issues we had with the floor was, well, the front firewall that needed to be aligned with the floor, and a little bit of extra material also on the front that was pretty easy to cut away and match to alignment.
All right, we tweaked our floor fitment a bit on the front here. Let's take a look at what we got. So as we can see here, we're uh, looking a little better on our flange. And down here, we're starting to line up a little better. We were able to even push in our firewall slightly, get it locked down, and uh, kind of compare it to our OEM piece. We're starting to look like we're matching, if not exceeding, the fitment of the OEM quality. One thing that I find very interesting is if you look at the stamping of the aftermarket piece, I'm gonna give this aftermarket panel a little bit of credit here, actually a lot of credit. Look at how flat and smooth this is versus this factory piece. And uh, unless this is damage that I can't fathom, um, I would imagine this is just technology of stamping for 50 years, that the modern stamping techniques and the metal quality are permitting a better stamping of this complex area without this kind of shrunken, you know, bent metal here, whereas it's very straight and perfect here. So this aftermarket piece actually looks better than the factory piece in that area, and it looks like with just a little bit of tweaking, we've been able to fit it. Let's come around and see how it looks from this side. As you can see, we kind of streamlined that fit, compare it to the original. So we're looking pretty good there. Our flanges all look decent. We got a little tiny bit of overlap on the floor pan there. We could probably trim a little more away if we wanted. Let's look at the original. Pretty close. This one looks like the flange sticks out a little further. So if we wanted, we can trim a little extra away. Um, I don't think there's going to be inter any interference with anything here, so we're good. So we might play around with that and just tweak it slightly, but just wanted to share with you, it looks like we got the fit pretty darn close. I'm happy enough with this corner. We'll be able to bend this down and lock all these together. We'll be able to weld up here. There's the inner. Let me go back around to show you that. Hang on. So you can see that lip sits up there. You know, that will bend back down. That's that 10 degrees that we were talking about. So we'll be able to actually bend that inner panel back down, weld it together. That looks good. We're butted up really nice against that corner. There's no gaps there at all. That looks really, really nice. We're looking pretty straight along that seam. So I think we're really close to being able to actually get a more permanent temporary attachment. We're not ready to weld yet but we'll go ahead and get some like Clecos or something or self-tapping screws in these areas. And I think we're gonna agree to our setup on these particular reference points and then leave us in a good spot to work that inner piece. I right, so I've gone ahead and drilled a couple of holes in our panel here all the way through. And we're going to use uh, Clecos, these are called, and they're little uh, temporary attachments, almost like temporary rivets. Um, so they're a nice, easy way to hold things in. So you use these Cleco pliers. As you can see, they will end up grabbing the panel. Just like that. <laughs> Did it the right way there. All right, so in theory, Get rid of our locking pliers and we've got our Clecos holding everything in. So it's going to give us a good approximate kind of um, piece there. Now what we'll do, we still need to figure out exactly how we want to weld this piece. So on this one, we're going to probably want to leave our flange here clean and we'll poke, uh, well not poke, we'll uh, pop holes using our, our flanging and hole punch tool. So we'll punch holes into this flange on this piece, grind away the e-coating and we'll be doing spot welds along the bottom here, just kind of like they did from the factory. Of course, they used a spot weld tool. We'll be using our MIG. And uh, that's kind of what we have to do is, I, I want to temporarily attach these, and then I want to go around and figure out, all right, where are we going to be welding? Where do I need to grind away more e-coating? We'll mark that. And then this is coming off once again, where we'll do all that work and prep it, and we'll prep the panels, and we'll be very close to doing some basic tack welds. Um, we're not going to weld the entire thing in yet, because if we find later on, as we're doing the floor that I need to somehow reposition something. I really don't want to be like putting all my eggs in one basket, welding the crap out of everything here, just have to come back and have to cut it off. So we're going to be doing tacks to get everything in. As you can see, we're doing a lot of mock-up here. That's the name of the game. Fitting, testing, refitting, tweaking, testing. 
We started with locking pliers, we've moved up to clicos, then we're gonna to go to tacks, and then when everything is ready, we'll do all the final welding. All right, so we've gone ahead and ground down the E-coating on all the surfaces we need to, and we've put some weld-through primer on so that we can go ahead and weld some of these components on. So what we're gonna wanna do now is in a few areas, we're gonna wanna go ahead and punch some holes for spot welds. So pretty much all, all along here, um, along the front piece there, and that's pretty much it. So really just those two panels are where we're actually gonna be welding through to do spot welds on the here. So we'll leave this flat, same with our front section. Um, along here, we're going to leave our flange uh, bare and, and not punch any holes because more than likely we'll have those punched in on our inner rocker and our sill and all that. But we'll be able to look at that as we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and punch some holes in here. We'll go ahead and get this remounted with our Clicos and we'll be able to start tacking it in. Now before I go ahead and punch them, I am going to mark out just to make them about an inch apart or so. So part of that really is just, I want to kind of match the uh, amount of spot welds that, that the factory used. And uh, I lied, they're more about three quarters of an inch apart. But uh, I want to kind of get it close to what they had. All right. To say I love this tool would be a bit of an understatement. I mean, look at how quickly I just put 15 holes in this panel. There we go. Nice. Ouch! All right, so it's starting to get late, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here and close out the video, but after a lot of mocking up and tweaking and cutting and trimming and fitting, we can definitely say that we've reached an awesome milestone in that a major component, our floor panel, is finally now in a welded in state. 
Sure, the weld isn't complete. We've still got a lot of work to do to finish our seam welds and finish all of our spot welds around the edges, but we can officially say it is in its new permanent location. Now, it was obviously a lot of work to get this large piece fitted in properly, but I'm real happy with the outcome. Everything looks like it's aligned perfectly. It looks better than the factory on, uh, did on the other side. So all in all, I'm real happy with how this came out. Now, we'll keep you updated as we do more. So definitely, if you enjoyed this, you know, stay tuned, subscribe. We'll have this and many other projects here on Vortex Garage.